Uh, my guest, the only person I know of in Greater Vancouver that does what he does, which is to insist on a written financial plan for everybody, Brad Snyder is with Dundee Wealth Management. You can get hold of him at 731-8900, and there's a 604 in front of that, 731-8900. Next Thursday, November the 12th, 2009, he's having a free seminar on real estate at the corner of 12th and Camby in Vancouver, the Plaza 500 Hotel. I'll be speaking of mortgage interest as a deduction to start off because i got to get out of there by 7 o'clock. I've got a, I have an art gallery opening that I've been planning and helping and working with for about six months. I actually forgot about the date when we were talking about setting up the November 12th because you gave me the, the option to pick the date. I picked the date I've been committed to for six months. Uh, but it was also involved when Ozzy was available. So sure. I had to, we took his day. And... Um, you can get hold of them on every Sunday morning on CL Radio, uh, 6.50 a.m. on your dial in Vancouver, and you can get it at www.radio650am.com. I believe that's what it is, and it's not as close to that. Anyway. Uh, and you, you must forget Ozzy Jurok is going to be speaking. Ozzy is going to be there. We can talk about what Ozzy is, because Ozzy Jurok is, again, in my opinion, the number one. Well, let's just start over again. Ozzy's speaking on real estate, and you're speaking on real estate, and I'm speaking of mortgage interest as a deduction because I sort of invented that. Well, I'm going to lean more to the financial planning side of real estate. And you're going to sit there. I'm going to talk about the home buyer's plan. I'm going yep. to talk about your credit rate. Yeah. And uh, your credit score, how how you have a good one or a bad one. Basically. You know, do you want a, a mortgage guy to speak? No, we got no speakers. No, we got no today. speakers. Right? Yeah. Okay. Just a, if, if I get another speaker, then I won't be able to talk. Oh, so. well, then you got to talk at your seminar. And oh. Fred's pay. Fred likes inter, what's the word, educating his clients and oh. other people. And what you do is you run these educational things as a advertising method to get more you let people touch and feel and meet you yeah, and yeah. see what you think about it and come in and deal with you if they want to. Yeah. We Nobody. teach people what they need to know to make better financial decisions so that they can become financially independent sooner, stay financially independent longer. Longer. Well, longer is the big one because yeah. otherwise they run out of money. You don't want your money to die before you I'm do. I'm going to, um, I was talking to a lady the other day, um, <coughs> age approximately 57, 58, 59, something like that. Um, got about $8,000 less left in her mutual fund account, which uh, started off at about 140000 and has actually had a couple of other small $10,000 amounts added to it over the last 15 years. But um, she's down to this um, $8,000, and her statement to me was that this next month is going to be the first time in the 15 years that she's made enough money that she hasn't had to take her rent out of her money. And I'm going to ask you to make it, because I already said, she's had a financial advisor for 15 years handling this money, a family friend who's never once said, you know, Madam X, you should take this money and buy yourself an apartment. Because if she bought an apartment back then, she could have bought a nice apartment for that amount of money in Vancouver yep. and wouldn't be paying rent today. As it is, she's got no money left and she's running out of money. And How old is she, Deborah? About 58. She's in trouble. Oh, total trouble. Absolute total trouble. Uh, there's no money left at the end of another two years from now. So the, in your opinion, was the financial advisor... Uh, I negligent? think the financial advisor is negligent. Uh, he bills himself as a financial advisor. Maybe she should, she should sue him. Well, what chance have you got of suing a financial advisor who didn't tell you to do what you should have done? Well, I got a client that successfully did it. Really? Yep. That's an, interest, that's an interesting... I shouldn't say she won. It was settled out of court. That's a scary one. Because how do you say... You know, you you can't, if somebody says, well, they're not going to, I'm just trying to 
be on the financial advisor side now. If somebody says, well, I don't know where I really want to live. Maybe I want to live on the island. Maybe I want to go live in Winnipeg, go back home to Saskatoon. Then maybe they shouldn't buy, right? Well, but, but over uh, 15 years. Yeah, but I am obliged by the laws that regulate me to say to the client, is your tolerance for risk low, moderate, or high? If, and I have to do that once a year, and i got to document it. Now, the client says their tolerance for risk is moderate. If I put them into investments, and the risk tolerance, or the risk of each investment is defined in the prospectus, that doesn't match that. If I put them into an investment where the prospectus says it's high risk, and they're moderate, I'm offside. And I can... I'm subject to regulatory fines and lawsuits over that, if that's the case. Well, that was another situation, this one, because when I first looked at this lady's finances, everything was in oil and gas, which took the biggest tumble in the little oh. crash we just had here. Sure. The portfolio she had went from 20000 down to $8,000 overnight. Could she afford to lose that money? Oh, hell no. Well, then, the, if, no matter what she said, the financial advisor is negligent because... Even though she says my tolerance for risk is high, that may, well, not, no, may no, still not be suitable. No tolerance for risk was never yeah, high. Because the facts, the facts say there's no tolerance yeah, for no, risk. She had no tolerance you for have risk. have to go by the facts. Well, that's an interesting thing. I don't want to put you on the spot or anybody else on the spot. But these are troubling times out there. And uh, people need to have their portfolios, their money, their stuff put together in a total picture rather than dealing an isolated incident. Mm -hmm. If you can't sleep with your investments, the investments aren't suitable. Yeah. But in some cases, you don't know what you've got. But yeah, it's incumbent upon the advisor to find out. Okay. That's called due diligence. But how do you tell? If somebody just doesn't get it, how do you tell? I mean, in my opinion, this lady really didn't understand what she had. Well... Good question. If she didn't understand what she had, then maybe the investment wasn't suitable. Yeah. I'm trying, just trying to come around. Because one, another one of the questions is you ask the client what their knowledge is. Yeah. If their knowledge is low, then maybe you, you're only allowed to put them into investments. How about knowledge with, zero? Well, tough one. Maybe you shouldn't take them on as a client. I should be dragging. Send them be, to the bank and have I them should, buy a GIC. I, I should be dragging Dan because <laughs> I can't. I, I, you know, I, on the program the other day, I, yeah. I made the comment, and I had never thought of it this before because people are always saying, I'm trying to keep, to, trying to save my capital, right? Mm -hmm. I, I really want to preserve my capital. Preservation of capital. Yeah. Preservation of capital. But aren't, that isn't the right thing. What they should be saying is they want to keep their spending power. Yeah, purchasing power. Purchasing yeah. power. Yeah. They want to, they want to be able to buy the same thing with what they've got today, ten years from now, that That's they right. can buy today. But if prices double, they can only buy half as much. And in in many years, they can only buy a, a third as much. Yeah, sure. When interest rates are ten percent, a hundred thousand dollars ten years later buys about nineteen or twenty thousand dollars worth of the same stuff. So this person's uh, financial objective then, uh, or risk tolerance, might be growth and in income. Yes. Not just income. Yeah. They want some growth, they want some income. Yeah. It's an interesting conundrum, isn't yeah, it? It is. Yeah. I mean, take you know, take the example. I remember one time we did a case study um, at a conference I was at. And this lady had gone to her lawyer. She said, my husband uh, is willing to give me $500,000. They were splitting up. And um, should I take it? And the lawyer who was advising her said, well, how much income do you need? And she said fifty thousand dollars a year. Well, it's good and for about eleven years. And 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 apparently the lawyer said, sure, sure, that that's a great deal. You're going to get ten thousand dollars interest uh, forever and still maintain your principal. Mm -hmm. Well, the the reality of the situation is, when interest rates declined, the ten thousand dollars declined. But even if interest rates didn't decline, mm -hmm. The ten thousand dollars after taxes and inflation. I think we're talking ten percent, aren't you? That's correct. Yeah, ten percent would be fifty thousand dollars. That's correct. But if you if you simply forgetting about taxes, if you simply inflation adjust the ten thousand dollars by say three percent for inflation, you're you're out of money in about twelve or thirteen years. I know, it's gone. This woman was fifty. This meant she'd be broke at age sixty-three. 
Well, so it wasn't very good advice. That's the exactly the same situation. From the lawyer. This was an actual yeah. case study, a real case study. Yeah. Well, it's the same kind of situation I'm just talking about now because never once was this lady suggested to her that she should buy herself a place to live in, even though it made the most sense of anything that she could possibly do. And uh, where are we? Where are we, Richard? Are we just about there? Take a take another cup.